Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the most forgotten things in Genshin Impact. These are things like items, characters, locations, and so on. Now if there's something I don't mention in this video, then feel free to comment down below what I missed. But um, these are the things that I could think of. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that everyone forgets about is the Parametric Transformer, which for some reason I always think it's called Paramedic Transformer. So basically, you place this thing down, put some garbage inside of it, and then it produces garbage. Pretty good deal. I think I'm running low on crystal chunks, so I'm gonna place some inside. 150 crystal chunk for this paramedic transformer. Okay, once that's done, you basically just beat it up until it spits out your items. You can beat it up with anything, basically elemental skill, burst, charge attacks, whatever. It works. So these are the rewards you get. As you can see, it's nothing particularly exciting. It is free stuff, but it's really not that much. It might seem good to use this every week because the rewards will add up, but the rewards are so little that you probably don't even want to do it. It's not even worth it. And chances are you'll probably just forget about it anyway, so yeah, this gadget is completely forgotten about. Okay, so next we have Elemental Sight. I honestly can't remember the last time I actually used it without the game telling me to. This thing really doesn't have a use other than telling you what the element is of an affected monster. It also shows you things that are flammable, but honestly, if you have half a brain cell, you can tell that any of these things are flammable. There is one cool thing about Elemental Sight is that it shows you the names of monsters on top of their head, but other than that, Elemental Sight doesn't really do anything else. So if you're ever too lazy to look at the archive to find out the name of a monster, you can just use Elemental Sight instead. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to get a Nabushi to attack the Wave Rider. The item I'm talking about in this one is the Wave Rider Repair Toolbox. This thing basically heals your Wave Rider when you need it, so we'll use it now. Right over here, the Wave Rider is now healed. Not that much explaining to do on this one, and also, this item is so useless because your Wave Rider actually heals on its own. So, yeah, you're never going to need that gadget. Also, Hoyerverse added a 90 second cooldown to this, thinking that players are actually going to use it, when in fact this item basically doesn't exist. The next forgotten thing in Genshin is a Geo character release. The last Geo release we had was all the way back in 2.4 with Yunjin over here. And as you can see, the Geo roster is very small, only made up of 7 characters. 8 if you include Geo Traveler, but I'm not going to count that. Now I know Navia is... Geo, but uh, I'm just gonna pretend like she doesn't exist right now, just to further prove this point. Not much else to say on this one, but uh, yeah, moving on. Okay, so the next forgotten thing about Engenshin is the Cryo Hypostasis. Now you might be wondering why it's on the list if it's a world boss. Well, it's the fact that no characters use its material. Some people say two characters use the material, but those characters don't even exist, so the Cryo Hypostasis doesn't exist either. This thing is completely abandoned. And speaking of cryohypostasis, Eula has also been forgotten about. But that's not really on her, it's more of Hoyerverse's thing that they did to her. I don't really need to explain this one, but yeah, Eula. People don't remember that she's in the game. Okay, next we have Enkanomiya. Now, when you open Genshin, do you even think about Enkanomiya? If you say yes, I don't believe you. Okay, but all jokes aside, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people who don't even know that this place exists because the Watatsumi quest is not required, so it's pretty easy to miss the quest in order to come down here. And if you're not doing all the quests, well, this place is pretty well hidden. Enkanomiya is something that is both forgotten about and people don't even know it exists. So, yeah. Poor Enkanomiya. I'm pretty sure if the double lizard boss wasn't here, then Enkonomiya would be even more forgotten about because aside from this boss, there's really nothing that unique down here. The visuals and the music are definitely different, but I don't think people really come down to Enkonomiya to visit a lot. This place has basically gotten no attention ever since the event that it had. So yeah, Enkonomiya, rest in peace. And since we're on the topic of locations, the Chasm Underground is another location that's forgotten about. Now someone recently mentioned that the best place to view all of Tavat is down here. 
and I completely agree. So after Perilous Trail, the only time you ever come down here is during Nahida's Act 2, and there hasn't been an event to go to this location ever since. So yeah, just like Enkanomiya, the chasm is abandoned as well. It's forgotten, like Xiao. Kinda wish he stayed down here during Perilous Trail. That would have been great. Now for this next one, I actually had to dig through my pea brain a little bit to figure it out and remember, but it has to do with Statue of Sevens. So if you talk to a statue and you click Statue's Blessing, you can actually change the settings. Basically, you can toggle when it will auto-heal you or not, and give the amount that you actually want it to heal you. So for example, if you only want it to heal you to 10%, you can change it. Now I'm pretty sure this mechanic was intended for when the game was new, and Hoyaverse didn't want people to just AFK by statues forever just to infinitely heal, but this thing is completely useless. You never actually pay attention to how much HP a statue can heal you, and you don't really care about how much it'll heal you. It's always at 100% and auto-recover nearby. There's no point in actually tracking how much HP you're going to consume because healers exist. So yeah, this mechanic is also completely forgotten about. I'll be back in 5 minutes to have you heal Chi Chi 100 times. Now this one will only make sense to you if you're AR60. Alright, for those of you who don't know, when you reach Adventure Rank 60, all of your Adventure Rank XP gets converted into Mora at a 1 to 10 ratio. So 1 Adventure Rank XP gets turned into 10 Mora. So knowing that, you basically never have to do another Gold Ley Line again, and you don't even remember what these are. But seeing as I'm quite low on Mora right now, I might as well just do a Ley Line. The only reason I remember what this Ley Line is is just because I do it on other accounts. Otherwise, I would have forgotten by now. So as you can see, claiming the Ley Line gave me 61,000 Mora instead of 60,000. That's because the Adventure Rank XP turned into Mora. So when you're playing the game as normal, as an AR60 player, all of your Adventure Rank XP gets turned into Mora. So you basically never have to do another Gold Ley Line again. Next, we have the Nameless Island in Mondstadt. Now, I did attempt to swim there, but I forgot how to do it, so I drowned multiple times. So I'm just gonna pretend like I'm over there right now. But yeah, that island has an Animoculus, a Luxurious Chest, and a quest associated with it. Other than that, there's basically nothing there. You can go collect some crab and some Ruin Guard material if you want, but trying to swim over there just for all of that is really not worth it. Sometimes I don't even remember that this thing exists because it's not even on the map. When I think of Mondstadt, and the ocean, I really just think of the Musk Reef over there, not really the Nameless Island. So yeah, this place is forgotten about. The next forgotten thing about Ingenshin is the 4-piece Bloodstained Chivalry set. I'm pretty sure ever since Pale Flame was in the game, people just completely forgot that this was here. The 2-piece set is fine, physical damage, same thing as Pale Flame. But the 4-piece set doesn't do anything. It also requires you to defeat an opponent, so if you're using this against a boss, it doesn't work. So, yeah, this artifact set is pretty much dead. No one remembers that it's here. Uh, yeah, save your time, don't use this artifact set. Also, I just realized while scrolling through the archive here, I have never gotten a single Vermilion piece. Which is kind of a good thing, because Xiao, Xiao uses this set. And, yeah, I don't want to be associated with Xiao, so this is a win. Also, speaking of artifact pieces, these tiara circlets are also forgotten about. In fact, they've been so forgotten about that even Hoyaverse forgot about them because they didn't even add a Dendro one. But I'm pretty sure if there was a 5-star version of this, it wouldn't really be used either because being affected for less time by an element doesn't really do anything. You can just put up a shield on yourself and you're gonna take less damage anyway. These are basically just used for artifact XP. Don't ever try to use these for gameplay purposes, you won't even notice anything. The next forgotten thing is this old Vanarana boss. In fact, so forgotten about that I forgot to get this waypoint as well. I'm pretty sure Hoyaverse made this boss a one-time thing instead of weekly or something like that, or like a world boss, because they didn't want to lock a boss behind such a long quest. For anyone who's ever completed the Arnara questline, you know exactly how long this thing is. But yeah, I can't remember the last time I actually thought about this boss. I've forgotten about it as well. Next we have Magic Crystal Ore. So these things appear on the map every once in a while in various fixed locations and you basically harvest them to use with resin to create weapon XP crystals. They're here if you need it but it's just more worth it to use the crystal chunks right here instead. 
because using resin on weapon XP crystals isn't really worth it. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm going to craft it four times just to show you that it's completely useless. So for 10 resin and 3 magic crystal ores, you can get 6 of these over here. I don't really think it's worth it, so yeah, magic crystal chunks. Forgotten about, people don't care. Whatever. Okay, the last thing that I can think of for right now is Genius Invocation TCG. And apparently I haven't been in here for so long that a quest has triggered. So apparently the bird that I keep in prison inside my teapot is here. That's cool. So yeah, anyway, Genius Invocation TCG. I can't remember the last time I played this game. Also, Sino is here. That's pretty fitting. Genius Invocation TCG is just kind of a spin-off thing inside of Genshin. I don't think people really care about it. Usually when there's an update or a new card or a new mechanic or something like that, no one really cares. Occasionally, there's also the heated event that gives bonus TCG coins. And because that thing doesn't give primo gems, I don't think a lot of people care. So they kind of just forget that Genius Invocation TCG exists. So yeah, those are a handful of things that I can think of that are forgotten about in Genshin. If you have anything else, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys later. Take care.